Hello Inigi fans, March is looking good once again for Inigi Games, with a number of long anticipated titles and Kickstarter games coming to fruition, although it does appear to be front loaded at the moment, so we have to see what else gets confirmed. We begin with Kaze and the Wild Masks, a retro character platformer inspired by titles from the 90s. On top of a wonderful pixel art look, our protagonist can don a variety of masks which will grant her different powers, although it does seem to be in service of the linear level design and variety rather than backtracking or open exploration. However, the core platforming and light combat looks challenging, of course reminding me of the blue blur, and I'm pretty happy that it's finally releasing. Also happy to share that the stylish puzzle title Red Ronin makes it to launch, where you play as a bloodthirsty Ronin who was betrayed and are now seeking good old revenge. It's a sliding puzzle title where your character moves to the end of whatever path she is on, slicing through enemies and only stopping at walls, and this is one of my favourite styles of puzzle games, with titles like Slay Away Camp and Keen, One Go Army being good entries, with this title looking to join those ranks. Simple but effective pixel art, and I'm interested in the special abilities and combo meter as well. Another title that I have my eye on is Dendi Ace, which did get delayed for a couple of months since the developers needed more time and is once again an action roguelite title. Play as a magician who gets trapped in a magic mirror by a jealous rival, having to use his magic cards to battle his way out. Some of you have likened this to Hades, so it certainly has potential, and I do like the magician theme as well. Hi Mr. Ace, it's good to see you. Of note is that it is from Brazilian developer Matt Mimek, who made the excellent local multiplayer title No Heroes Here, which I just covered, and was picked up by Korean publisher New Wiz, who have been spot on with their roguelike picks so far, including titles like Skull, The Hero Slayer, and Metal Unit, so this is definitely of interest. One of the Kickstarter titles that I mentioned is Cyrilim Ultimate, the infinitely replayable monster teaming RPG and is the latest entry in one of my favourite series. This is technically the fourth entry chronologically, with the so-called Ultimate moniker being that this is the title to get in place of the other three where some creature designs and mechanics are reused, but they are tweaked, balanced and polished to the highest degree. On top of the story campaign, there's supposed to be, I quote, a ridiculous amount of endgame content that can last players hundreds of hours, and based on what I know of the series, this is not an exaggeration. Interested to see what's new in this, and as a fan of Dragon Warrior Monsters, this gets a spot. You are staying right here. On these forsaken rocks you call a home. You are alone in this. You always were. One gorgeous adventure game that also makes it to launch is Minutes of Islands, a hand-drawn adventure game with an art style resembling something like Adventure Time, but with more details and some blood and guts as well. Mm -hmm. 
you play as a mechanic with the enormous task of repairing the world while building the powerful Omni Switch, but due to how great it looks, it gets a spot. Excuse me, do you mind if I sit here while I wait for my coffee? Oh, um, yeah, go ahead, knock yourself out. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> it, it only spilled a little. Gosh, is your sketchbook okay? Yeah, unscathed. Oh, can I see it? Um, okay. This is a cool castle. <laughs> Thanks. I used to sketch constantly and then, I don't know, I, I just stopped. So did I. There was a time in elementary school when I was the girl who was good at drawing. The girl who was good at drawing? I remember that girl. Exactly. <laughs> I'm Kenzie. I'm Michael. One of the most fascinating puzzle titles in development is Maquette, and it finally launches next month. The term is a French word for scale model or rough draft of an unfinished sculpture, and is used very cleverly here with the recursive level design. The closest title that I can think of is Superliminal, which plays with perspective as well, but the recursive nature of this design makes it intriguing. Add to that a modern day love story, and you have the potential to be one of the best experiences of the year. I don't want this to end. Me neither. We're not just friends, are we? I don't know. Is it supposed to be this difficult? Tunch was high on my list of upcoming roguelites since it's a beat-em-up title with procedural generation and run-based gameplay which is not something that you see every day as compared to the top-down or platformer variants. The titular character is a being of great power which has gone mad leading to evil creatures invading the forest so it's up to our heroes to save the day. If you enjoyed titles like Lost Castle, definitely keep an eye on this. A very pleasant surprise for me is the impending release of Everhood, a rhythm RPG that I've been keeping an eye on for many years dating back to its demo from its itch.io page. From the look and vibe, of course this has some Undertale vibes, where one of the most interesting parts is the combat, where enemy attacks move towards you along a note highway like a rhythm game and you have to move and jump to avoid it. Mix that in with some mini-game sequences, puzzles and classic adventure RPG style exploration and you have something very interesting indeed. I love my roguelite platformers, so I'm excited to check out ReVita as well. Another title that featured in my list of upcoming games in the genre, and is another title that I've been following on Twitter for quite a while. It has quite an interesting setting, having you ascending a clock tower, but somehow subway stations are involved as well. And of course, I'm a big fan of the look. The action does look busy with its share of particle effects, so I do hope that it would be readable in motion. Always interested in this genre to see what developers come up with, but this looks very well made and it's one to watch in early access. There are many stories in our past. Many interesting, but most untold. And though they may be forgotten one day, there will always be others to rise from the void. One of the best surprises of the year so far is Loop Hero, revealed at the Game Awards in December 2020, having a playable demo in February during the Steam Game Festival, and is already launching next month.
Based on the reception that I've seen from you, the big community, on Twitter and from other YouTubers, this should be a hit, being a compelling roguelite strategy title where you place buildings on the map as your hero endlessly loops around and battles enemies along the path. I love the art style and the gameplay systems are very unique, making it another title of high potential, unsurprisingly since it's being published by Devolver, but it does take the number one spot. To see more of the big picture, check out these awesome videos and I will see you after the jump.